Well, hello and welcome to tutorial 120 in this series of programs and tutorials for TradeStation Easy Language from markplex.com. And if you're not familiar with Markplex, then please go to the site, which is https markplex.com, and then you'll find quite a number of free tutorials and programs. And uh, a new thing I started recently called quick tips which are just sort of small tutorials anyway uh, lots to explore there now today's tutorial we're going to be looking at the average true range and the average true range there is already of course a uh, indicator for TradeStation which is one of the ones that you get when you download the platform and you can apply that to a chart as I've done here on the daily chart and that's uh, fairly easy to understand I think but uh, what I want to do is on a 60 minute chart or another intraday chart I would like to know the daily average true range and uh, that's what we're going to be working on today and the way that we're going to be doing it and there's probably several ways of doing it but the way we're going to be doing it is to use a price series provider so let's go and look at the development environment I've already created a program to do this and uh, that is available for download but let's just do this from scratch so let's say new indicator and we'll call it uh, tutorial 120 development DEV okay and it's going to make it for chart so say okay and the first thing that we're going to want to do is look since we're using the price series provider we're going to be look, uh, going to the toolbox and selecting price series provider and we're going to double click on that and we're going to be doing some of our basic setup using this and if you see if we click on that and then go to properties if you don't see properties you can go to uh, view toolbars and uh, you'll find it there but I've already got it on my my screen so I'm going to click there and click on this icon here and I'm going to change some of the things here so we'll leave that we're going to change load to true we're going to change the name let's make it slightly easier to work with just a PSP symbol I'm just going to change that to symbol so we'll pick up the symbol that you have currently have on the chart and uh, it's going to be bars but we're going to be going for daily and interval span one um, we don't need volume information we don't need include tick data in, in terms of range what we're going to do is we're going to be using the first date function so I'm just going to put in just for the, uh, the sake of argument uh, a random date so let's just go you'll see how we change that in a moment now in fact I don't need the first date at all there's already a last date so that's already set up for us okay so okay so I think we're good there now we're actually in this program we're not really going to be we're not going to be using the update event but I just want to demonstrate how you can create that should you need it so I'm just going to double click there and you'll see we get something in our program now what I always do at this point is I go to view designer generated code and I just drag my mouse over the designer generated code uh, right click copy that go back to the program and paste this into the program now having done that we need to get rid of this item here so we've now got the the bare bones of what we're trying to achieve so I'm just going to see if that verifies and it does so we're going to start to modify it so we're going to have an input and the input is going to be uh, a number of periods for the ATR so I'm just going to call that input ATR length I'm going to set that to a default of 5 now the other thing that we're going to be using is some namespaces and we can see immediately that one of the namespaces that we're going to use is going to be ts.marketdata so what we can do is we can remove that from there and we can add it up here by saying using then the name of the namespace then semicolon like so I also know that one of the things that we're going to be using needing is the 
EL system namespace. So I'm just going to put that there while we're doing this, like so. So let's just again verify this thing. Okay, and because we've now got the TS market data as a namespace, we can delete that from some places in the program. Just to tidy things up a little bit. Now to save, save some typing, what I've done is copied the names of the variables that I know that we're going to be using and I'm just going to paste them here from the other program so that we, uh, we can just go ahead and use those when we need to. So don't worry too much about those at this point. But um, the first thing that I want to do is make sure that this uh, price series provider loads enough um, bars, in this case daily bars, as at the first date of the chart that we have this applied to. Now, when the program is applied to the chart, the method override void initialize component, which is the thing that we copied from the designer generated code, will be run first. And so that will effectively run on the first bar of the chart. So we can get um, the first bar date time at that particular bar. Now, what we put in for the moment was a, uh, a date. Now, in fact, it looks like what we've got is uh, a range based on bars, which is what we do not want. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to delete that and I'm just going to set up, I'm just going to go back to toolbox and you can do this if you make a uh, error like I've done. So I'm going to click on that. I've got a new price series provider. I'm going to go to properties and we're going to call this just for the sake of argument PSP2. And this time we need to make sure that we get a range based on the date. Okay, so I'm going to select a range type of date and we've got already a date entered there. So what I'm going to do, I think we need the well, in fact, we do need the first day. That's the day that we need. So let's just leave, get rid of that. And if we now go to the designer generated code, we should see that we've got a first date set up. And I just want to grab that little line. And I'm going to put that in my development program, like so. Now the name we need to change and we're going to be doing something else as well. What I'm going to do here, just delete that. Okay, now this is assuming that the first date is going to be this date. What actually we're going to do, when we apply this to the chart, we're going to grab the date of the first um, bar of the chart. So we're going to call this first bar, or rather first date time, and that is going to be equal to bar date time, which is a trade station keyword whatever you like to call it to get that information. So that is storing that in first bar date time. Now we're going to actually add a few days to this because we'd like to add, we'd like to add a little bit more data than that. And we're going to do that by saying far first date time. Then we're going to say add days. And then we're going to actually add some negative days to go back in time. So we're going to have the input for the ATR length. I'm just going to grab that. I'm going to make that negative. And we're going to just take away two more days as well while we're about it. And then now when it says the um, PSP first date, we can put into that rather than the preset date, we can put in the first date time like so. And just to uh, show that this works let's just run a quick print statement so we're going to go print date time um, we're also going to put in the bar date time now that is in date time format so we're going to need to go to string so we can see what it is like so and what I'm also going to do here is put in max bars back and you'll see what that's all about in a moment Okay, so let's just 
run this again and we'll see what happens. I go view, print log. Now you'll see it's got a date here of the 6th of February 2017. And uh, if we look at the chart and look at some of these earlier bars, you'll see that that actually is uh, round about the first bar of the chart. Uh, now, what I wanted to do is if we just go to analysis techniques and we click on this and say format, general. Now, sometimes you'll notice with this that you will see this statement appear twice. And the reason for that is that the system will calculate the program to start with, and then it will recalculate it if your max bars back is set to uh, auto detect. So we just went, if we just go to the program again, and if we go format analysis techniques, click on the program we're working on, format uh, general, you'll see that we've got this thing here, auto detect. What sometimes will happen, the program will load, then it will recalculate, basically trying to determine how many uh, bars it requires. Okay, now the other thing that I wanted to do is to detect, we've got this thing set at the moment as a time zone of local. I would like it to be able to detect whether the chart is set to local or exchange time. So we can do that using the analysis technique um, class and we get that by going uh, analysis technique data streams stream square bracket data num dot time zone now you're probably not going to remember this but it's just worth um, having uh, a reminder of where the thing is so we're looking for time zone dot time zone equals ts data dot common dot time zone dot exchange so we have a choice between exchange and local like so. So if the chart's time zone is exchange, then we're going to say PSP dot time zone equals exchange or rather equals TS data common exchange exchange else. Uh, we just need to change this to the same thing, but instead of exchange, we can be using local, like so. Okay, so let's just verify that, and we will see. Okay, so that appears to verify. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go through and we're going to be putting in the calculation and plotting the information, the um, ATR, the daily ATR on a 60 minute chart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video here and I'm going to make a second video which will go through the calculation.